We've got some breaking news from the UK's government about Cruising's return, and it's not good news. We also give you all the details about an unprecedented alliance of two of the biggest cruise lines in the world, Norwegian and Royal Caribbean, and much more. Well, ahoy there, cruisers. Welcome to this week's Cruise News Roundup. Let's kick off first with the news from Royal Caribbean and Norwegian Cruise Line. So yeah, in an unprecedented move, an industry first, the two cruise lines have joined together to create some new health protocols, which will allow them to once sail again. But how are they going to do this? Well, they form something called the Healthy Sail Panel. This panel is comprised of a group of top experts. These experts are being put together to help guide the cruise lines forward during this whole COVID crisis. They are planning to make their recommendations by the end of August. Once they've got these recommendations, they'll submit plans to the CDC and other regulators around the world for approval to return to service. They have already said that social distancing will be one part of the approach. Let's take a look at the panel. Well, the experts include former heads of the CDC, governors, a former Secretary of Health, as well as doctors. Healthy Sail Panel co-chair Dr Scott Gottlieb said cruise ships could be safer to travel on than visiting major cities to avoid coronavirus. So that's really good news, wow, isn't it? that's a big statement it's to a big come statement. from him, yeah. But cruisers have always been super clean. They have also said that all of this work they are doing is open source. That's why you don't see other companies such as Princess and Carnival being involved. It means that any other company could adopt and benefit from the collective scientific and medical insights, which is great. So it's going to be really good for all of the cruise lines. Frank Del Rio, president and CEO of Norwegian Cruise Line said, we compete for the vacationing consumers business every day, but we never compete on health and safety standards. He went on to say that the industry has always had rigorous health standards as we've seen in person, but COVID has meant they have to raise the bar even higher. Yeah, so this is some good news. It feels like we've actually got a plan forward and it's good to see cruise lines coming together. This is what we're doing, let us sail again. Yeah, instead of waiting for the CDC, they have went ahead and started a panel themselves. Does that go to show that they think the CDC is a bit lacklustre and not really doing much? We don't know, but it also puts into question the, the plans are not being put together till the end of August. Yeah. So does that mean that a mid-September start is a little bit far-fetching, maybe? Yeah, yet again, are we seeing cruise lines not telling us that cruises are cancelled when they already know that they're going to be? Yeah, it's going to give them two weeks to put all of the plans and training into place once they just actually come up with the recommendations. So we really are expecting to see cruises yeah. be pushed back further again. Yeah, I'm going to take them start date with a bucket of salt. So in other Royal Caribbean news, in the last week, they have once again confirmed that there will be some type of buffet still on the ships when they return to cruising. Yeah, this seems to become a massive controversy since the CEO, Richard Finn, first talked about buffets not maybe being around. It's caused a massive uproar, yeah. but he is saying that there is still going to be some type of buffet on board. But like we said, the Holland, Holland America yeah, I don't model. think it's going to be passengers helping themselves to food anymore. I think that's going to be gone initially anyway. Maybe once this all goes away, it could come back. Who knows? In other news from Norwegian, they are allowing customers to keep loyalty points from cruises that have been cancelled. This is a really lovely move from Norwegian and it's a great perk for all of those who have been affected. So basically it means even if your cruise has been cancelled, you'll still receive those loyalty points with the latitude scheme that they run. But make sure you check your latitudes account online if you have been affected to make sure you've had those points loaded. Yeah, it's just a small little perk from Norwegian and it could make the difference between getting to the next level up. Absolutely. Next up, the Foreign and Commonwealth Office, or FCO, has just released a statement advising Britons against cruise ship travel. This breaking news is just in, saying it's due to the ongoing pandemic and is based on medical advice from the Public Health England. It's not clear whether the FCO advice also includes river cruises or not, which have actually already resumed sailing in Europe. This again is a big blow to the cruise industry at a time when flights, resort holidays, theme parks, restaurants, cinemas and transportation are all allowed to resume operation again. 
As the easy target, the cruise industry has once again been singled out. The return to cruising on the middle of September is not looking good, especially in the UK. So in other news, Carnival Cruise Line has revealed that their new ship, the Carnival Mardi Gras, will be delayed again. It will not begin cruising now until February the 6th, 2021. Oh my gosh, I can't believe we're talking about 2021 already. It's crazy, it's just around the corner. Construction on the Mardi Gras began in November of 2018 and Carnival were expected to take delivery of the ship next month with the maiden voyage on the 21st of August. So a little bit disappointing there. We are going to see a delay again to that ship. This new mega ship includes the first ever roller coaster at sea. Carnival president Christine Duffy said, While we had hoped to make up construction time on the Mardi Gras over the summer, it's clear that we needed extra time to complete this magnificent ship. We share our guests' disappointment and we appreciate their patience as we work through this unprecedented time in our business and the lives of so many people. They also announced that the massive renovation to the Carnival Victory has also temporarily been put on hold. This renovation would cost $200 million and would see the ship been renamed as the Carnival Radiance. It's thought that the refurbishment will now take place next spring. This means that Carnival Radiance's cruises will be changed to the Carnival Breeze between November 2020 and April 2021. This means that the 18 sailings of the Carnival Breeze from Fort Lauderdale have now been cancelled. So a little bit of shifting around there. But yeah, it is disappointing, isn't it, to see that got even more delays. Not unexpected, I guess we should say. And in other carnival news, the carnival legend helped a stranded boat off the coast of the Bahamas. The boat had run out of fuel and was drifting with no power. The carnival legend provided 25 gallons of diesel fuel and the sailors were able to refuel, then return to Jacksonville, Florida. Well, that's a bit of good news, isn't it? Well yeah. done to the carnival legend crew. Next up with p and Cruises. It was announced a few days ago that the p and Oceana will be leaving the fleet. This has been done to fit in with the future plans post-Covid. The ship has been in the fleet since 2002. Before that, it was actually the Ocean Princess for Princess Cruises. The ship has already been sold, but no details of the buyer yet. Just maybe that it's somewhere in Greece. p and Cruises president Paul Ludlow said, Whilst we and many of our guests will miss Oceana, her departure will allow us to focus on the remaining ships in the fleet as the capacity expands with the delivery of Iona later this year, followed by her sister ship scheduled for 2022. So that's sad news. We know a lot of people really love the Oceana. Yeah, she was a really, she really was a fan favourite with the uh, cruise industry. So if you booked a cruise on Oceana, you will be offered 125% future cruise credit either that or a refund. You can use the credit on any other ship or itinerary, including their up and coming new ship, Iona. So news from Princess Cruises, they've announced changes to their Alaska and Europe summer season in 2021. The Majestic Princess will be sailing from the West Coast on her inaugural Alaska season, while the Regal Princess will be coming to Europe and sailing from Southampton, replacing the Grand Princess. Instead, the Grand Princess will be deployed to Los Angeles for the summer season, sailing to Mexico and California. That's great news, isn't it? It's good to see a brand new ship almost yeah. coming to Southampton. The Regal Princess is beautiful, so we're excited to see that in Southampton. We are excited. I think this is just the beginning of a lot of shifting of itineraries as plans change, obviously. So I think they're having to move ships around to fit in with the new itineraries. Also some good news from Princess Cruises. Enchanted Princess, the line's newest royal class ship, has completed her ship trials. It's gone through a series of tests and manoeuvres, checking the overall safety and stability of the vessel. Following the successful sea trials, the ship has now turned back to the Fincantieri shipyard in Italy for further finishing on board. Her debut dates and completion are still pending. We have no information of when she will actually be delivered. She was supposed to be doing some cruises in Europe. We were supposed to be going on an yeah. amazing cruise on her, so we're a little bit upset that it's been cancelled, but hey, we'll get on her at a later date, won't we? Definitely, yeah, and again, it's not to be unexpected with the delays that are happening at the shipyards around the world. So in other news, the river cruise line Crozzy Europe will resume cruises from France this month and other destinations in Europe in August, which is fantastic news 
to see another cruise line starting up again. Yeah, we had an amazing cruise on Cross Europe last year. We highly recommend them, so go check them out. Hertie Gruten are leading the pack when it comes to ocean cruising. They are already up and running in limited capacity already. They have also added some short cruises around the British Isles. These cruises will be departing in September, making them the first cruises in the UK post-COVID. Wow, exciting. And these cruises look incredible, if not a little bit pricey, but again, it's a glimmer of light in the end, at the end of the long COVID tunnel. It is exciting though, a rammed Britain cruise. Would you guys be interested? Let us know in the comments below what you think. And it goes to some really cool little ports like the Isles of Scilly yeah. and Isle of Man and some amazing places in Scotland as well. It looks like a fantastic cruise. But it's a clever choice as well, just to stick within one country as well. So that means that they can cruise around the UK without having to visit other countries, which as we know at the moment, is going to add a lot more complexity. So let us know what you think about this video and all of the news, including Royal and Norwegian working together. What do you think about that? Do you think it's a good thing, a bad thing? And when do you think we're going to get cruising again? Again, we think it's going to be pushed back again from yeah. the September 15th. I know we ask the same question every week, when do you think? But does this news from Royal Caribbean and Norwegian give you a little bit of glimmer of hope? And do you maybe see an actual set date to return to cruising now that these cruise lines are working together? And thank you so much to our Patreons. If you'd like to become a Patreon, you can find out all of the details in the description section below. We give you loads of goodies like exclusive live shows, uh, behind the scenes footage, as well as a two weekly podcast. Our captains of the week are Jeff and Betty. So thank Ahoy. you so much, guys. That's it till next time. Happy, Happy cruising. cruising.